Well, hey, McFly subscribers. So I have this here. Um, it's a dubbing table bench. You know, a while back, uh, I was using this one. You can see the size difference here. This one makes really short little brushes, obviously way shorter than this. Usually it's about that size. I can get maybe one, if I'm lucky, two flies out of that, depending on the fly I'm using. Um, this kinda, I guess, works for something like nymphs, if you're gonna be, but, but streamers, you need a, a lot longer brushes. Um, so it, it's a lot of work to make a brush and then to only be able to make one fly with it, it's really nice to be able to make really long brushes. So I've already tied three flies with this one. As you can see, it was much longer. Three flies. And it actually was right about there. I went from one edge to the other, so that section. So I can probably get six, seven, maybe even eight flies, depending, of course, what fly you're tying. This uh, was a small little bait fish. Um, this is a craft fur brush. I put a little sparkle in it for something extra. But the nice thing about making your own brushes is you you can kind of tailor them to what you want. You can buy brushes, but you're stuck with whatever the brush comes with. Plus, brushes are really expensive if you're going to buy them. So this table, after a lot of research, looking around, trying to find the best one, um, finally I got um, a message from Oasis Benches who makes this. And he said that he was making a brush uh, table. He had seen a video where I used this and was like, you know, I've got better options for you. And sure enough, this is a lot better option. Uh, again, much longer. Um, this thing moves a lot more freely. Again, this is a junky, junky little table. Um, this one, uh, the small one. This doesn't really even turn very well. Look, I spin it, it just doesn't, it hurts a lot to turn, so I gotta use a, a drill to be able to do it, so that's an extra tool. This never moves out of the way, so then the brush is getting all trapped up in this when you spin it, and it makes for a matted brush, a lot more brushing out with, with like a dog brush, um, a pet brush, basically is what I use, um, but it has a couple other features. This does move out of the way, as you can see. So then once you brush it up, um, it, it, you know, when you're ready to brush this up, you just pull this right out of the way and then you spin it up. Real simple. Has uh, some places here to hang stuff, has spots to put your wax, dubbing wax, it's got holders here for extra spools of wire. This is um, a size 8 dubbing brush uh, wire and you definitely want to use dubbing brush wire because regular wire will break. Um, dubbing brush wire is a little more stretchy so um, it's not going to break on you. Unless you get much longer and more tight spun brushes. So I'm going to make a quick brush for you guys, show you how simple this is. Let's see if I can do this where I'm not getting in the way of the camera here. Let me pull out a little bit, bend this over, stick it right, just stick the loop right in there and spin it and that starts it. Grab your wax, wax up your thread, get any extra. Put it right through the little loop there. Bring this down. There's a little uh, rubberized stopper here. Um, and there you go. Now, one nice thing about this is, this is two-sided. Uh, so there's a light side and a dark side. So if you're gonna be using darker material, which I am, you can put in the light side so you can see it a little easier. Um, get that put in right there. Put that on. So today I'm doing um, crack and dubbing. Uh, I'm going to be making a redfish crack. I like this stuff because it has little rubber legs in it. Makes it real nice. It's really simple, guys. You just however thick you want this. So if you haven't made a brush before, this is pretty much the process. Really, really simple. 
Um, there's all different brushes you can make and get creative, make some really, really cool stuff. Um, you can mix different dubbings. You can use natural fur. You can use uh, craft fur, which is what I used on that one over there. Um, real simple. You can even add like a little flash if you want. Now there's also a measuring thing here. Um, so if you're using like EP fiber or something, you can measure it out if you want one inch wide brush or two inch wide brush or whatever it may be. Um, you can measure those out right here, which is nice. Just stick the material on there and just cut, 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 cut along the way. Makes it really, uh, really easy. I'm going to change angles here. So I don't like to go all the way to the end. Um, that can kind of spin up a little bit and look funky. And that's pretty long. I could probably extend a little bit more. And I'm going to add a little bit of Starburst dubbing, which is basically the same thing as Ice Dub, just for a little, little extra flash. Okay, then real simple, pull this up, bring it up over, wax this, and try to make sure it lays. So I put my finger there before I wrap around there, and then just start spinning it up. Now, I make a few twists before I take this off. And that kind of attaches that end, take some nippers, cut that off that wire, and then you can take off the, the table and just spin it up. Now what's nice is this side, you can see it just keeps spinning, this side you can counter twist. A lot of times this side will, will not be as tight as this side. Um, because this is where it starts turning and you'll get some loose turns on this side so I'll just do a couple counter spins on this side going the opposite direction and it'll kind of help tighten that up a little bit you can really quickly spin this up even without a motor some of these come with motors but they're like 250 bucks this is only hundred and nineteen dollars pretty unheard of especially for a really quality dubbing table. Highly recommend it. It has a nice little spring here, so that way this, once it gets really, really tight, it's not gonna bust off the, the wire. That's super tight right there. I don't need it any tighter. You just come in and brush it. Now there's really not much waste. A lot of this will fall down. You can collect this back up and use it on your next brush. A lot of this in here you can pull out. There we go. Keep all that. And now you've got dubbing for your next brush. Okay. Make a couple of them in that color. And then when you're done, I usually clip one end, there we go, and the other end just slides right off, and there you go, you've got a dubbing brush. Um, this will tie quite a few flies. It's really simple. Like I said, I really like this table. It's the best one I've found, at least for my use. Um, like I said, there are some that have motors and stuff, and sure, that's. I guess that can be nice. I find this has a little more control. I like it better. Um, and it allows me to make quite a few brushes, big brushes that I can tie five, six, seven, eight flies with. But this gives you so much room here. There's just, um, nothing's gonna knock in the way. And the problem is when you're spinning up a, a brush, if there's anything in the way while you're spinning it, it'll get real knotted in that section and then it won't come out real nice. But you can see how nice that brush came out. Um, there's almost nothing touching the um, and nothing wrapped up in the center. 
So it's a real, you know, good brushes, guys. So anyway, check out Oasis. I also have their um, table. Um, I have a few things by them. They make really high quality. Uh, the owner of the place is, is Craftsman Woodworker and um, just does really, really well. Uh, it does really high quality stuff, so. Mm -hmm.